Steph Curry. Should we be encouraged or discouraged by Curry's... Curry, I like that. <laughs> ...fourth quarter performance? Skip, I'll start with you. Curry, yeah. Curry. Uh-huh. <sighs> this is a tough one, Stephen A. I'm going to go barely encouraged because you know I love me some Steph. Mm -hmm. In his third quarter explosion clinched for me the fact that Steph Curry mm -hmm. has been the MVP of the first round of the playoffs. We've got a long, long ways to go. But of the first round, Steph has been the MVP. I agree with that. Okay. Four out of five threes in the third quarter burst. Threw in three assists, 14 total points. And I'm thinking... I got this because I picked uh, Golden State in six games. And that was, it was considered an upset over Denver. So, Stephen A., I'm barely awake. I'm lying in bed actually watching this game. And my Warriors go up 18 with nine minutes to go. And I must admit, I'm dozing. I, I don't really remember what happened for the next couple of minutes until I heard the announcer's voices rising. And I kind of jumped awake and I thought, whoa, what's up? And all of a sudden, it was a 10-point game. And then all of a sudden, it's eight, and then it's six. And then it, Stephen A., it got down to Golden State almost blew this because Wilson Chandler, I don't know if we have this, had a shot and a, and a follow shot, a shot and a follow shot to tie the game at 90. To tie, what? Are you kidding me? Thanks to nine Golden State turnovers in the fourth quarter, that's impossible. That would be, if I do the math right, that would be 36 turnovers for a game. Nine in the fourth quarter at home. Stephen A., Steph Curry's fourth quarter stats, did you check this out? He scores two points with four turnovers and zero assists. Wow, those weren't exactly first-round MVP nope. numbers, right? Nine. So I got to give him a small pass here. This was his first playoff series. This was his first closeout game. We just saw what happened to the Knicks and Thunder at home in closeout games. The pressure mounts. It's tough to pull it off. So I'm going to give him a slight pass, but I am acknowledging I did not like what I saw in that fourth quarter because it was a near nightmare. Yep. I didn't like what I saw either, but I'm not overreacting to it. Closeout games are hard, but particularly for young teams in that kind of position. And when you consider the fact that you have – you're in that kind of position with that crowd, you know, about to close out Denver, and you're a young team, those mistakes happen. It really, really is a given. Yeah. You, and, and you knew that Denver. I mean, Andre Iguodala has been in this league for a while. Ty he, Lawson, he was killing Ty it in the Lawson, fourth quarter. Ty Ooh. Lawson has been in this league for a while. You look at some of George Carl has coached in this league for many, many years. You know that there's going to be a fire in their belly. Here they come. And that kind of run is going to happen. That's why you see Mark Jackson put his hands in his pocket. He'll turn around. He'll lean back on the scorer's table, and he looks up. Mm -hmm. If it were veterans out there, he'd lose his mind. He'd be going crazy. Mm -hmm. But because it's a young team, you've got to anticipate that those kind of mistakes are going to play. They're going to happen. More importantly, even though it's a dicey situation because you want to harness them and you want to make sure that they are disciplined enough not to make those mistakes, but you don't want to do it to the point where – it really disrupts their game and it interferes with their flow. So you got to understand that. That's a given. In the end, here's what it comes down to. All the talking, the jibber-jabbering, the fine, the $25,000 to Mark Jackson, uh, the Scott Hastings doing, you know, radio for them, calling Mark Jackson classes. And we love Scott, but it is what it is. You know, you have all of that stuff going on, and these young dudes are in the middle of it. Plus, you got the coach talking about there's a hit out on Stephen Curry. You got him saying <laughs> the same thing. You got all of that this cost stuff going him. on. Yeah. Uh -huh. You got all of this stuff going on, and what's the deal? That crowd inspired that youth, that that youthful squad. You look at a Jared Jack. I was very proud of Andrew Bogut. He wasn't bogus last night. I'm glad night. you brought he that had up. 21 yeah. rebounds. And four showed up blocks. four block shots. Been trying to get back from his left ankle injury that was bothering him all year long. But it, the fact of the matter is, in game five, he played like flat out garbage. It's just that simple. Skip, you seven feet tall, and your ankles ain't hurting you anymore. Yeah. There's no reason to not be a force on the boards. There's just none. I don't care what anybody say. And the fact that he did what he did last night, while proud, justified my criticism of him from the game before. I because agree. if you could do it in game six, you could have done it in game five. Yep. That's all I'm saying. Well, Mark Jackson said after the game he was surprised listen, by that performance. Listen, listen, wow. listen, listen. He showed up and was and Draymond Green yep. showed up. And so, and, and I'm a fan of Harrison Barnes. We met him, you know, he's been on the show. The, the dude can play. But Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, mm. they're snipers, man. 
They're lethal, and they showed up. And I think next series is going to be sensational as well. These guys uh, ain't maybe gonna, maybe too sensational. You know yeah. what? I think it goes seven. Wow. And I think Golden State, it's possible they could beat San Antonio. Oh, you can't but say that to him. Are you that's going it. out on that limb? You can't say that to him yet. I'm not going out Wait. on that limb yet, but okay. I'm telling you. I think he's leaning. I believe that the series is going to go seven games. It's going to be a great do. series. Wow. Okay, I truly last do. quick point. Yeah. A side show to the game that we need to touch on. Okay. David Lee did try to oh, play. And it was Mark Jans J Jackson, who's the coach of the year, to me, coach of the year, trying to pay a little homage to Will, uh, Willis Reed and his Knicks. Obviously, he grew up in your, your neck of the woods. Yes, he did. And I'm not sure it had any impact on that game. I don't know what I you did, thought. It, he I did made it. it for a minute and a half. It was nice to yeah. see. It was inspirational. David Lee deserves it because of how hard he works and how well he plays for them. Congratulations. Welcome back, big boy. But in the end, it made no difference because I believe exactly what happened mm -hmm. is exactly what was going to happen. They were back in Oakland, man, with that crowd, uh -huh. and they were not going to lose last night's game. They were not going to lose it.